Welcome to the TAC show with uh, Max Howell and Ben Levy of Evil Loud. Now, uh, can you tell me about the beginning of Evil Loud and bands that you made together? Yeah, Max, you want to take this one? Oh, sure. Um, I don't know when the, the beginning of it was because we've kind of, we've known each other like forever since we were actual like children since uh since ben was born and um and so we've always just kind of made up songs for fun and then as we got older i guess we started fully making songs and uh making them a little more complex and and then decided to start releasing them eventually so yeah it's been a longer process over uh over a lot of years then when we were really young like three or four we called ourselves evil loud because we thought that was the most badass band name possible <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. yeah when we released music on spotify we decided to release it as one word evil loud or evil loud however you want to pronounce it but yeah we decided that might be a little better but staying true to our so, three-year-old selves there what was the first like serious song you ever created together that you like you actually like put and got into like you ever created how long ago was this Serious song is interesting to define. Um, we definitely were writing like full songs from the beginning, like three, four. Our big hit was We Like to Be Naked, where we would take off our clothes and kind of dance around. And I know that sounds nutty, but we were three. That's, that's what we did. Um, that is true. And then um, we definitely probably in like middle school started writing more like full fleshed out songs that you could actually put somewhere. Well, we never recorded anything um, until we were maybe 15 or 16. So what was that first song you made? What, what was the first recording you made that back then? How did they compare it? The first? Tony was, was the first recording? Yeah, I was going to say Tony. Tony was the first one that was, uh, that we really recorded and, and kind of edited and we made it and we were like, this is amazing. <laughs> that's when we got into production. We had like garage band on our phones and then we were like messing around with that. And that's how Tony happened. That's how, how Brony happened. So how did Tony blow up? Like how did I saw how it got thousands of uh, streams? What led to that success of Tony? So when you when you release music, there is categories of what genre of music each song is. And Tony was under hip hop. And so we put it out and then some uh, playlist curators found it. It ended up on a few different new hip hop playlists. And then um, it just people all over the world. I've seen like Australia, Finland, Germany, everywhere. There's like people in a ton of countries listening to Tony, which is kind of amazing to me. Um, and then a few hundred of them kept listening. So now we have um, some listeners that just keep listening. And Tony's um, definitely our biggest song. I'm also very glad that Tony has become the kind of the biggest song out of that because that was again that was the first one we really made and that was the first one that I feel like we showed to a lot of people before we released it like we showed it to a lot of our friends and our and our families and everything and everyone seemed to love it so yeah. it, it just makes sense that it would <laughs> gain more popularity so how long did it take for that song to blow up like how much time did it um, Tony, I don't think anything happened for the first few days. It was just like a few followers from each of our Instagram pages and some of our friends and stuff. And then probably the third or fourth day we got some, like it got on one playlist, it got a few hundred listeners and that we thought that was crazy. That was like such an honor to have that many people listening to Tony. And then it got on another one and then it was like thousands of listeners. And that was just, um, that was amazing. And that's, yeah, that's from the yeah. So what would you say would be your inspiration for this like new album that just that just came out recently? What do you feel like? Is there any artist you felt like heavily inspired you during the creative process? Artists. That's interesting. Um, Max, do you have any artists? I don't know if I have like really a specific artist we went after because again, it's it's kind of in the style of music that we we kind of made up ourselves since we were 
little kids, so I don't really know if I even it's inspired by our three year old selves. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the kind of part of the point of the album. I mean, obviously, there's inspirations. There's a lot of um, musical artists that I take inspiration from, and I'm sure Max does too. But um, I think as the album as a whole was, we're just trying to do truly what we wanted to do with every song, and that's kind of. I mean, that's what Orisu Napkin is about, but that's what the whole album is about, is just doing what we felt like doing and not going always... like, hey, let's sound like this person or this person. Yeah, yeah. I really, I gotta say, I really love the diversity. Like one song, it would be uh, it would be sort of folk-based, and the next song, it would be techno. Mm. And uh, I, really yeah. liked, uh, I really liked the diversity. And the, the real, I really loved the instruments and part that came within the album. And that's what made me wonder, was there any specific inspiration that came from that? Um, I don't think so. Oh, uh, no? I appreciate so, it. I don't, I don't think there's any albums that I can think of that kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm sure people experimented with diverse albums, but nothing we specifically took inspiration from. So have you ever, uh, have you ever performed live at all? Or is there any story behind that or not? Not in a in an official capacity we've definitely performed for family and friends i mean that's that's what we did when we were little so we'd have little shows for our families but um, oh, no, we haven't performed this album live at all oh okay so are you current are you currently working on anything right now like currently working on any future ideas you'd like to talk about any future things going forward with? yes we have a lot of stuff planned for just the future we, we're writing a lot of stuff we have a lot of songs that we had already kind of come up with before or made, but not necessarily recorded. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely planning to release a lot more in the future. That is, so what, can, can, what, what did inspire your passion for like, I know you, you were just talking about how this music stuff is something about what really like inspired you to start going out? Like, what inspired you to journey into music and take do such a big risk? I think I think we just love writing music together, and the, naturally the next step was releasing it for people to wow. see if, if they like it at all. And because we've been doing that again since the beginning, and so now it was like, all right, it's time to put something out and see if people like it, and maybe get some feedback. And we did, and our next um, album will work off of that feedback. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like the, um, I feel like the first album, honestly, like the, like you were saying, releasing that music is really just like kind of a starter. Like it's just, yeah. because there's not too many songs on the album. There's really not a lot, but it's like kind of just giving the general right. vibe for music. And then there's, there'll be, it'll be a lot more than that in the future, I think, like, planning ahead yeah we're definitely just establishing ourselves and then we'll release more and as you said maybe do some live performances that'd be awesome yeah so is there was there any challenges you faced during the creative process of your album the music making any serious like challenges that you had to overcome um the biggest uh sort of blockade i think was the production i'm pretty new to music production and um we did uh, produce the whole album I had someone come in his name is Joe Crooks and he's an amazing producer and um, singer and songwriter his music is on Spotify um, but yeah he helped me produce um, or master or a soon napkin in Stockholm and you I think it definitely shows when you're listening to those songs but the rest of it we just produced ourselves and that was definitely a learning curve um, on getting better at it Max is learning about it and so I think the next album that'll be a lot easier for us. So, did the pandemic ever affect production of all the something remote ever affect production of songs, or how was how did that stuff happen during that? Weirdly, the pandemic I feel like was where I feel like production wasn't slowed. We we made some really good songs, kind of during the pandemic, not necessarily during the pandemic but around that time i remember like because we were home a lot we would um we would talk and and collaborate and kind of make wasn't wait when was was tony made in 2020 or 2021 when it was originally 
I think it was one of those. It might have been like we were just starting to see people again. Yeah, I think that was right as it was coming out of um out, out of we were coming out of COVID and then um we were just hanging out and then had the genius idea to make Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the and the pandemic inspired us to start taking um walks together, which is something we didn't do. There's a long train track that sort of spans most of the way from Max's house to my house. So we would just we couldn't go in each other's houses. So we would just take really long walks on the train tracks and then come up with a lot of ideas and just spin a lot of ideas back and forth. And I'm sure some music came out of that. Yeah, that definitely inspired a lot of also it's not always it's not always when we're coming up with songs like we're specifically talking and thinking about a song. Sometimes we're just talking and we get random ideas and keep expanding on them. And if we think, I don't know, if we think it's creative or think it's funny or want to use it, we can incorporate, we kind of incorporate what we're talking about into our music just for random things. So once they build it off those ideas and talks and ideas bouncing off of each other, how long was the production time for each song to like fully develop and become a conceptualized thing that people can listen to? Um, this, it was pretty fast. I mean, Tony, Roni, Electrical Socket, those were all pretty much one shot, just like one day. We recorded them really fast. We had the idea and it happened. And then the rest of the album um, took longer. Each song took a few days, but we were kind of rushing that one. It's just like, we're, this is, well, it was my last um, summer of high school. Max had been in college for a year, but it was just like, we kind of want to put music out right now and we're not going to live in the same city for a minute. So we just want to put it all out right now. So we did rush it a little bit, um, but that was just so we could get our music out there and we'll, we'll have a slower process next time. Yeah, definitely. So uh, is there any story behind the album cover with that little dragon? Like, where did you have the cover from? Like, who does the story oh, yeah. inside that? Or? There is a story. So Sally the Dragon, this... So both the band name and the first album name, we kind of wanted to go back to our childhoods. So like we said, the, the band name was, we used to say Evil Loud. And Sally the Dragon um, was actually a real stuffed animal. It was like this, how do I describe it? It was it was a stuffed animal, but it was like pretty big. It was like a full, like long. It must have been like six feet long or something. Like, yeah, this this green dragon. And we would just say it was Sally the Dragon. And I don't even remember like what exactly kind of games we would play with Sally the Dragon. I just always remember that being a central point of whatever we were doing. Yeah. We always had to have Sally the Dragon. So yeah. So it, it all goes back to uh, it all goes back to the childhood. It all goes back to the games. Yeah. Yes. So how, how so you say you've known each other since like very early childhood. Was there any story about how you two became so close and have ended up becoming creative partners over the years, or is it just sort of happened? Uh, I mean, it was it was pretty. It just had to happen. I mean, our our parents were friends. The day after I was born, Max's mom brought him into the hospital to visit me. So I've literally known him my whole life, and then we just always were together a lot and and alone creating stuff. And it was of course kind of zany and goofy when we were little and still I guess is, but um yeah, we've just always done that. It's just never known anything else. Now uh Ben, did you ever do any uh, musical programs back in high school? Like did you went to, did you ever do any of that stuff and did that help help you out or assist you with the making of the album? Like those programs at all? Uh nothing with music production. I did, you know, band, I did street band and stuff and I played instruments at school, but nothing with music production. That was definitely just an independent um learning curve for me. So so you 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 so you essentially know how to read music and you've understood the like sort of like the notes, the more notes based of like music since you were young then? Yeah, that was just um, you know, like piano lessons on my own time. Oh, okay. What, what what about you, Max? Do you do you have anything to talk about for this? Like uh, like do you like for like do you want to talk? About, did you ever like do any chorus or band stuff? And did that ever help you out with the making either? Yeah, I definitely. I mean, I I grew up with a lot of music and um and I participated in a lot of uh chorus 
uh, band too because I'm a, I'm a drummer also. Um, but yeah, I uh, just knowing how to sing and getting that practice singing for my whole life uh, definitely helped with that. And then, yeah. And then Ben did all the other instrumental stuff though, because he knows like a ton of different instruments and things. <laughs> so, so you, so Max, you sung on, so you sung on all the tracks, or was it did Ben ever contribute to any lyrics at all? Or was it all just you? Ben contributed to a majority of the lyrics. Um, he I mean, like about... when. I, um, I mean, like, like, uh, like who sung the majority of the songs on the track? That's, that's so, a real question. So I'm I'm singing on all of the um songs, yes. but uh but it was definitely like Ben and I both worked to get for all of the songs we both um worked together um yeah. at least somewhat. He did work for um Stockholm and you and um Orisu napkin and Orisu napkin and forgive my cheese. Ben did um write all of those all the the lyrics to those and uh and the music and everything and um and yeah but i'm i'm singing on all the tracks and then ben does all the other uh like 95 percent of the music. so uh can you tell me what it was like to work with somebody who had more on the professional side like is there any stories you'd like to share working with that music producer who taught you a lot of the skills you know and how to learn your is there any uh, um, cool stories? Yeah, he was he was so amazing to work with, and definitely, if we had more time, he would have um, helped me with more of the songs on the album. But just a lot of really in depth stuff that I never thought about, like panning and EQing. Panning stuff is really interesting, and I didn't really know about it until I went in and was like, "Hey, I have these songs. How can I sort of flesh them out?" Um, something he did with Orisu Napkin was I felt like the song was kind of a big cluster of instruments. And he was like, well, we, what we can do is we can pan it so the drums will be on the right side and the guitar will be on the left side. I guess it's ukulele in that song. So he kind of just helped give that song room to breathe. Um, he did a lot with Stockholm U too. So I definitely recommend if anyone's a beginner producer trying to produce their music, just just make something with someone who knows a lot and they just along the way you'll learn a ton from them. Yeah. And that, again, he's Joe Crookston. He's an amazing um, producer in the song. Uh, was this all in person with him, or did, was this all just over like video stuff, like all for? This was in person. Yeah, he's a he's a family friend, and he lives near me, so I just went over and brought all my equipment, and we worked over the songs together. Uh, how much time did were you able to like be able to spend spend with him? I think it was like uh, three, four hours. Definitely a solid chunk of time, and again would have had more time if I wasn't leaving for college. Um, but um, yeah, it was it was just one day and we spent a long time looking at those songs. Uh, now, uh, Max, I know now that you, like you, you're not able to get to as, like, the band as much due to college, but how do you apply, how, now that you're in like, college, you're focusing more on studies, how do you apply that passion and talent you have for music day to day with college like how do you do something like that um i'm for that i mean i just um i'm still writing music and and ben and i have been uh calling a lot working on music um just trying to like kind of a, a slower process of like as as uh, we're both in college thinking through um songs at a, at a slower rate slowly building on songs so that we can record them later and yeah that's basically what i've been doing so it's just been uh slower. It's just it's just been like slightly slower due to it not being in person and virtual. Then, uh yeah, uh, exactly. So once um once we're both able to actually meet up and and really make music and like not have to call because that you know that obviously creates a lot. It makes more difficult to create a lot of music. So once we're able to uh, get back to work at a, at a faster pace, that'll be really nice. Yeah. So. How many wait, how many songs would you say that are are not finished, but how many songs would you say right now that haven't been released are in the future? Uh, I have a list somewhere. Looks like we're working on about um ten more songs and who knows which ones we'll release. We'll probably come up with some new ones or maybe cut some songs. But 
we're always working on a bunch of songs at once. And some songs will um we so some songs will be released the same way we did the album, and there's definitely gonna be songs in the future that um that we just kind of made up more casually just for fun and aren't necessarily um the the kind of songs that you would release as a I, I'm kind of explaining this badly, but like they're they're the kind of songs that we made more improvisationally and um and we'll definitely release those not necessarily through uh spotify or, or like the same way we did but we might release some sort of videos and um uh, if ben wants to expand upon that at all he can no um, yeah just like sharing in a loose way on instagram or some sort of format like that where we're not putting it out on on spotify or itunes or anything because there's definitely some songs that we've made that i really love but don't really work as just like a straightforward record it and then release it. So yeah. So it's sort of like uh it's sort of like a fair balance of sorts between my like, like actual like conceptual full on conceptual ideas and just like sort of funny one offs. Right. Like, yeah. Stuff you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh? Do you have any ideas for what your second album will be called? Is there any idea what that will be? What are we gonna name that? Uh, um, yeah, we we have some ideas. We're pretty set on one right now. I don't know if we should, uh, say definitively right now, but we definitely have ideas. Um, and to, just based on like fun concepts that we've come up with. Um, yeah, we, we actually. Have a, we have a list for like the future of just like, hey, what if we put this out? What if we put this out? Besides uh, space and timing and whatever, what's one thing you like plan on doing with this next album that you weren't didn't have the opportunity to do with the first one? Um, for me, I definitely like uh, we've talked about a lot that the album was kind of made right at the end of. Uh, well, some of the songs have been recorded in the past, but um, a lot of it was done right at the end of summer before we both left. So again, we kind of had to hurry that along, which is why. Um, so for me personally, I, I definitely want to be more involved with with uh, writing for more of the song, which is already happening. Like well, I've been um, thinking of a lot more stuff. And um, so, yeah, the, the next album, I would just say is um, is going to be more. Uh, what's what's the word I'm trying to think of? Balance. Yeah, balance. Yeah, balanced and yeah. yeah. I think another thing creatively is that the first album was kind of just whatever we wanted to write and make, and that's definitely the second album too. But we might do a little bit of hey, this one worked. People like Tony. People like Oros and Napkin, and then kind of figure out why they like those songs, and then how we can write more songs to cater to what people like because that's I don't think there's anything wrong with um, writing for people who like your art mm -hmm. exactly so now that you have the opportunity more with timing and like a lack of rushing uh, how do you feel like the, these new songs lyrics that you're contributing to more Max now that you have more time more energy to focus like it's not being all crunched up like how do you feel like it will be different from the the first stuff that was seen on the first album um it'll be easier for again for me personally recording the the singing parts I think will be easier because um since it was compressed all at the end of the summer Ben had written these songs and I hadn't heard them so I he had me start recording them and I didn't have really tons of time to practice because again we record we had very short amount of time to do this so it um it would take me a little bit to kind of figure out how to sing the songs, make it sound smooth, make it sound good. So, um, but with me, um, with, with being more involved with writing it, I already know how it needs to sound as I'm doing it, which will make it a lot easier to record, I think. So you think it'll end up being higher quality as a result of you being able to give it more time and energy and be able to process it more? Yeah, from a singing standpoint, I definitely think it's going to be better quality next time. Now, as singer, a singer of your band, what what was the most vocally challenging song you ever had to do? Like you ever had to perform? No, I know a fair amount of it was rushed. 
Was there any which was like really a challenge? Um, the most challenging one to record. I remember Orisu Napkin took a lot of takes because um, there would just be so many. There are so many great little um, things with some, of, even like the individual words in the song that uh, that Ben does with the music that I loved. That um, and it would be hard for me to think through all of them as I was singing. So I would mess up one like little thing, and I'd be like, "All right, wait, do it again, do it again." And so we that that I remember taking a lot of takes to do. So it was just sort of difficult to like properly enunciate the diction within that song, like uh, give it the enunciation, like the diction. Or... Yeah, sometimes the diction, but also things like like rhythm or um, or if there was a no, like when Ben wrote it, if he wanted it to to move a certain way, like if he wanted me to slide my voice a certain way, um, I had to make sure to to catch all of those to make sure it was the full image of what we wanted for this song in the album. I think it's hard. We're both very specific people. When we write a melody, we want it to be exactly just how we wrote it. And so it might be nice to get one recording that's all the way through and it sounds natural and you just kind of sing it how you sing it. But we definitely never have settled for just like, yeah, that's how I sang it in that recording. It's like, it has to be just how I wrote it because that's how I want it to be. Yeah, the the fastest recording, the one that was made the fastest was uh, Tony original. Right. Again, that was that was kind of made in one day. We um, we sat the way that one was made was Ben said um, we were just kind of thinking, trying to think of music to make, and so Ben was like, "Hey, I'm gonna put this auto tune um, effect on my phone and I'll sing something into the phone." So I just started. I just thought of first thing popped in my head was the name Tony. And so I just started Tony in the, in the whole auto tune thing you hear. And, uh, and so we just built all of the lyrics off of Tony and then recorded. I did that. Uh, it did not take, that pr probably took one or two takes for me to, I think if I'm remembering. And then we actually, I mean, we re-recorded it um, for when we made the album. So that it was more updated because the original version of Tony was made like, probably two two years ago something like that yeah two or three a while ago. yeah it was um it was a while ago and so yeah we re-recorded it and again that that one only took me that one was much more smooth and sounds more smooth in the song again because i um since i was there when we were figuring out how it sounded i also knew how exactly how i wanted to make it sound so it all uh it all started out with uh so it all started out with some silly fun improv and then it became a full-on thing yeah that's uh that's really that's really cool and interesting and fascinating to think about as someone who i've always been fascinated i always like music but i've always sort of struggled to uh understand like the, the more i guess reading music like i guess the more i don't know if scientific is the right sort of side of it so it always it is always really interesting to hear what goes into it and what goes behind it right so um what was like as so ben as an instrumentalist doing an instrumentalist was there any instruments for any of the album songs which are like super hard to record or super hard to do like any instruments yeah the um this might uh come as a surprise but the ukulele on oracy napkin is actually one of the hardest parts for me to record just because i'm I mean, I'm mostly a piano guy. I've, I've been playing guitar for a little bit. I never really took lessons. So the, the B minor chord on Orisu Napkin was kind of difficult on ukulele to slide up and do it. And I'm pretty sure it actually ended up being a separate recording. I recorded the ukulele part and then a separate recording of just a few seconds of me strumming the B minor chord because I couldn't quite transition fast enough. And, you know, if I had, if I had a few weeks or months to practice that I definitely could have gotten it done but we were rushing it so I just did a separate recording and that's how I worked that uh, little speed bump out. How long how long did it take to figure out that whole uh I guess the whole ukulele like recording how, how long did it take to figure that out? Um probably an hour I mean it was a bit of me just like recording the ukulele part over and over again and I'm never quite satisfied with it and then finally I'm just like okay I'm just gonna 
have to record a separate part and then that took another few hours of me just like figuring out how to clip it together so it sounds like I never stopped playing ukulele and I'm just still strumming but I think I got there. So I know you talked about how you were learning about the more technical side of music and trying to improve and like do bet and like perform and improve and learn new things with that side with the more technical behind the scenes side but is there anything like instrument wise that you're trying to experiment with with mouth in the new album or trying to learn trying to improve um yeah i think if if we were going to perform these songs live one of us would have to play drums so we'd both maybe do a little practicing there i definitely have to practice my guitar and ukulele for orisu napkin but that's pretty much it just a little practicing if we were going to do anything live i think that's where we need to practice the instruments and stuff okay so is this yeah so when when college ends well i guess almost well over at the year is working so is working and creating and moving forward with the new album as much as possible the number one goal for the band right now yeah i um that's kind of what we're working towards is just making songs and and grouping them together and deciding uh you know which ones do we actually want to be album songs or which ones do we want to use somewhere else but most of the time we're just making songs in general and then the decision to of of how we want to use those songs usually comes a little later but yeah we definitely have some songs that we know are going to be on the newer album yeah. and next summer we will start posting on instagram maybe tiktok other places our little clips just to get some attention and maybe draw viewers and eyes and ears to our album but i think the albums are always going to come first the music because of course we want people to listen to it but we need to have something for them to listen to i think a lot of people right now are starting with the hey listen to me and not like creating something good for people to listen to so that's always going to be our priority is the music how, have you, as a result of like releasing the album, have you ever had any fans reach out to you over their appreciation with the music? Appreciation? Is there any fan stories you'd like to talk about or has that ever happened at all? Yeah, like, I've, I've got a few. I've had um, a few messages on Instagram, just, hey, some strangers, like, hey, I love your um, music. I don't know how they found it or my Instagram, but it's, I think that's super cool. I've had people at my college um, tell me that they love my music. Of course, friends and family, but it's 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 super cool to hear that from friends and family and strangers is equally um, amazing just to hear someone random be like, hey, I found your music and it spoke to me. And I know a few thousand people listening to it doesn't seem like a lot in a climate where people are getting billions of listens, but that's that's a lot of people and I'm so grateful for even that number. Yeah, and I um I definitely agree about um that it was cool, even like friends and family, like you're saying, it was um because I, I didn't encounter I haven't encountered a lot of like strangers, people I don't know who've talked about it for me, but um but it was really cool to see uh like Ben was saying, kind of some friends that I um friends that I hadn't really told about or ever showed my music before, and then we released it and I was able to kind of post it and let people know and then having some of my friends who hadn't really heard my music before talk to me about it and say that they liked it was really nice and I liked uh, hearing that a lot oh, so it's just been a whole bunch of amazing support and positive feedback yeah I'm, I'm I've gotten some feedback that I'm not sure if it's positive or not but it's none of it's discouraging so it's interesting to hear what people have to say oh how how do you how do you deal with like criticism that might not necessarily be positive or good or that might not like not necessarily be valid? How, how do you overcome those tough situations? Um, I I think it's all interesting. I mean, I haven't got anything outright hateful. I've had one of my friends said, um, "This is someone who she has released some music too," and we were talking about our Spotify's and our songs and stuff, and she was like, "Yeah, it seems like you don't really take your music very seriously." And that was just, that was weird. That was a comment that I completely disagreed with, but I can see where she's coming from. I mean, it's goofy music, but that that's just us doing exactly what we want to do. And we have some serious songs because that's what we wanted to do at that time. All of it's just us being genuine. And I think I can understand why people might not get that or 
think of the songs as ironic in some way, which I guess they sort of are, but that doesn't mean it's less um, serious or that we're just messing around, I guess. Has yeah. anybody ever uh, treated you differently because of the because now you're posting music and now you're uploading it? I don't think so. No one has. Uh, I haven't noticed any major changes in anyone's personality around me because of my music or anything. But uh, yeah, I don't think so. I think that might change uh, once we start pushing it next summer if we start releasing little posts for engagement and stuff and, and asking people to listen to our music. I think that might be where people are like, oh, hey, you're really, this is a big part of what you're doing and how you're um, existing in the world right now. Because as of now, we just kind of like put it in our Instagram bios. We're just like, hey, here's some music, listen to it if you want. So it's not a huge deal to anyone. Once the, once the marketing steps up, it'll... <laughs> once the marketing, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Well, uh, anyways, thanks for talking. It was great hearing you talk about your experiences with this band, your journey together, performing musically over the years. And I hope that you have a great second album and that your your future songs will succeed and continue to get, drive more and more of a following over the future. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Thanks for, yeah, having, thanks for, thanks for having us on your podcast. Oh, yeah. Any, anytime.